people. It is June 24th, 2010. This is Day 9 Daily, number 144. Oh, we're doing a little QXC versus Kiwikaki action today because many people have been requesting Protoss, and it was already on the plan. So, of course, I'm delighted that the interests line up with things that were in the works. Because in the future, we're going to have a Protoss special. We did a Terran special with Braddock. Then we did a Zerg special with Artosis. And then we're going to be doing a Protoss special with none other than the lovely Ukrainian White Ra. Oh, White Ra. Oh, oh, I'm getting excited for those. But, of course, I must make some special shout-outs. First of all, Reddit made a shout-out regarding my shout-out. So, of course, I'd like to counter shout-out to Reddit. Thank you, guys. Fine folks over there who post random things about me that not even I knew were true. And then also, um, again, on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash day9tv, I'm doing a Q&A. So there's a video there. Post your questions on, in the comments and then give a thumbs up um, if you like the questions. And then the top questions I will answer every single week. So that will continue until I'm dead, basically. Or until, or until people just decide that YouTube isn't cool anymore. I bet, you, I bet you in like four or five years, people will be like, yeah, that YouTube fad. Yeah, now it's all about just cooking blogs or something. So at least I'm just riding the wave. But of course, June 24th is a very special day in our hearts. And I want all of you to know why it's the best day ever. Because today is my grandmother's birthday. Happy birthday, Grandma. I mean, she won't actually be watching anytime soon because she didn't even own a computer let alone understand what the internet is but my grandma is the awesomest person in the universe i want to let you know that anytime my grandma does an action she says boop isn't that adorable so like when, when she like goes to the microwave she wants to cook something for like two minutes and ten seconds she goes boop 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 to start it it's adorable if she's pouring milk and the milk is glugging she boops on every single glug and, and, you know, as she started to get older, you know, she, you know, obviously her, her health wasn't amazing because I think she turns 94 today, but she's just the smiliest, friendliest person in the world and she like scoots around. She looks like this adorable penguin. I just love my grandma to death. And I, I called her today to wish her happy birthday and, and I made the mistake of trying to explain to her what it is that I do. So, you know, grandma, there's this, there's this thing called the internet and this is how it, works and you can you there's streaming and there's a video encoding grandma who's 94 who was born in like 1917 you know like well let me just make sure you understand and really it felt a lot like i was explaining esp to helen keller right there just wasn't really enough foreknowledge on her part you know it's kind of like well what's esp sean well helen it's it's like being able to see someone else's thought well it's like being able to hear someone else's thoughts. Well, I guess it's like if there is Braille in another person's mind and you can f screw it. You know, it's not actually that interesting. It's not really cool. You know, happy birthday, Grandma. I talk about video games on TV. And she's like, that's nice. So, of course, she had a wonderful, happy, warm birthday. And, uh, of course, with much further ado, the main reason we were going to be celebrating her birthday is Protoss vs. Protoss, or excuse me, Protoss vs. Terran play from a fellow known as Kiwikaki. Now, Kiwikaki is one of the American server players, and I think generally the European and Asia server players tend to get sort of the biggest, um, I guess, hype up, just because there are a lot of European-only and Asia-only tournaments out there, but Kiwikaki is a very strong Protoss player, and we're going to see him do a lot of fancy, cool stuff on Metalopolis today. And, um, well, who cares about the pre-explanation? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. This, as you know, as I have previously stated, is Kiwikaki, very strong Protoss player. Spawning up here at this top position, at the bottom we have QXC, also a very strong American server player. So, um, we've had QXC on the show a few weeks ago, which of course was a whole lot of fun. Um, got to hear his thoughts on exactly what it is that he does in certain situations and how he decides on whether he's going to be doing some counter-harassment and all that good stuff. Um, but either way, huge map that we're seeing right now. Um, Metalopolis in general feels big just because of the way that the center works, just because of how it constricts movement and all this stuff. But in particular, just look at the mini-map. It's cross positions, right? I mean, on Metalopolis, especially on these cross positions, it just takes forever. I mean, this probe is going to already be spending a long time trying to get to his opponent's base just to see what's up, let alone to 
you know, move out for an attack. So anytime you're in these cross positions, you'll generally see players cut back on unit producing structure or two. They'll have some of the, um, I guess I'd call it the core Q units of the army, but won't really have a lot of the muscle units of the army. So for instance, getting a lot of psionic storm, but not getting a lot of gateway units like zealots and stalkers. Um, that's because the storm, you can plant here, and you can do huge storms here and defend. And with that extra money, you can just expand again. A lot of people are very defense-oriented. So you'll even see Terrans do things like cut barracks and cut unit-producing structures, but still make some tanks. So that way they can get extra expansions up faster. Either way, we see QXC getting uh, a usual early barracks, a usual early refinery. Anytime you see positioning like this, you should immediately say he wants to either build a reactor or a tech lab early. I mean, this sort of spacing should be pretty um, pretty obvious. And of course, Kiwikaki just goes for the gateway straight into, excuse me, Assimilator, and is getting a cybernetic score. Spending all of his Chrono Boost on the probes, um, and honestly, if you were cross positions, I think this is ideal to be spending all of your Chrono Boost on the probes. Really, I mean, as anything that's super economy oriented, perfect decision making to be just going for a lot of probes, not doing anything weird, like even Chrono Boosting the first Stalker, I, I don't mind not doing. And we do see QXC going for an early factory. There, it goes down. And interestingly, QXC not building the wall off, um, which is kind of cute because, again, cross positions. Does QXC know where his opponent is? Yes, indeed. So that means QXC is saying, yeah, I don't need to wall off early at all because huge cross positions. So Kiwikaki did exactly what I said was an okay thing not to do. He went for his Stalker and for his Warp Gate Chrono Boost right away. Nothing wrong with this, um, per se. And everything that Kiwikaki is doing is pretty standard, and I think it's important that you identify this as standard to be getting your second geyser right as your cybernetics core is building, to be going for a relatively fast three gateways. I'm pretty sure there are three gateways coming up. Because I actually watched this game live, so you can see me down here in the observer list. Yep, there's a third gateway. It was quite a while ago, so I believe the tanks still do 60 damage in this game, but still, such interesting transitions by Kiwi Kaki that definitely going to be a useful replay to review. Um, but first stalker pokes out this sort of first stalker action great because they're generally not going to have the marauder concussive shell So you can at the very least come up here shoot once and back away and look at this no damage taken to the main life So the shield will obviously recharge QXC will talk a little bit about what he's doing in a moment But I do want to briefly say that this is super standard three gateway fast warp gate super safe has a lot of versatility. You can do a lot of early pushes. You'll see players build pylons here to do early aggression with this. This is really, I would call it like the... You can make it the linchpin of your strategy in all three matchups. Um, it looks like Kiwi Kaki is supply blocked, though. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, there's the first pylon coming down. Pretty thin timing on that. Look at that. Right as the warp gates pop up, this pylon just finishes. So, pretty phenomenal timing, to be honest. And this early of a robotics facility, um, it's so important you don't succumb to one base syndrome. So Kiwikaki is getting the three warp gates. The reason this is so versatile, the reason why this is so standard, um, is for a few reasons. First of all, um, stalkers and zealots are great. They work amazingly, amazingly well against pretty much any composition that Terran's going to be throwing at you. Um, and also, the sentries can get you the guardian shield and the force fields. So if, for instance, your name is Liquid Nazgul, you love going directly to your opponent's base and endlessly force fielding his ramp. So that way he can never leave. One of the reasons why three warp gate is very standard. You can do things like three warp gate aggression, Nazgul style, three warp gate expand. You can go three warp gate um, into some other one basing things, but I, I want to point out that that's a little dangerous. If you're doing too much stuff with one base and you're actually macroing, you're going to be kind of broke, so you won't really be able to get an expansion up. So um, what we see over here um, from Kiwi Kaki is he is getting a robotics facility out at this point in time, and ideally he's going to be just getting observers with this. Um, you can, you know, always rely on the robotics facility for some sort of emergency, oh my god, he's going immortals and I wasn't expect, or excuse me, oh my god, he's going marauders and I wasn't expecting him to do that. You can do those sorts of transitions fine, but 
In general, if you're intending on going like three warp gate non-stop unit and non-stop immortals, that's generally sort of weak. So we do see Kiwi Kaki does a little bit of stuff here, but he gets repelled relatively easily. Now QXC, I need to spend just a brief period of time discussing what he's doing. So this is kind of a funky mix that he's going for. It almost looks like he's playing Terran versus Terran. Notice the Marines, the tank, and the Viking. He's already getting siege mode. One of the reasons why I like this style in general is because you heard me say Nazgul always likes endlessly force fueling the bottom of the ramp. Well, the tanks obviously deal with that pretty well. And I've seen QXC do this a number of times in other matchups as well. Just do some sort of trade-off with a tech lab early to get Banshees, or excuse me, Ravens up very, very, very quickly. Cool support spellcaster. But either way, Kiwi Kaki being smart, not committing too much. Look, there's really not that many units here, even though he opened three warp gate. Instead, he's expanding safely. He's going to a Twilight Council. And this play I really, really like, opting to get Storm up very early. 